do you even love the narcissist anymore? That sounds kind of silly, right? You want them so bad. You will do anything for this person and they treat you like garbage. I've been there myself where I kept chasing this person. I was so in love with the idea of being with that narcissist that I, I lost track of my whole identity in a sense. A lot like the narcissist, I didn't know who I was anymore. I was chasing a dream in a sense. I really wanted to, I really liked and was in love with the idea of being with the narcissist. But if I really sat and thought about it, and especially from my perspective of being over that person now, I know that I, I didn't really love that person. And there's a lot of detail about why you don't even really love the narcissist because the narcissist doesn't love themselves and and they don't have a, a self, an, an identity, right? A lot of what they're doing is copy, copying and mimicking who you are. They don't have a solid sense of who they are in reality. So when you say, I'm in love with that person, I'm in love with that narcissist, you're really in love with, people say you're in love with yourself, but you're really in love with that physical being, but you aren't in love. Because to love someone, you... I mean, it's just infatuation when you when you like someone for for something external, right? When it's for what they have, whether it's beauty or whatever, that to me is like lust or just infatuation. That's not love. When you really love someone, that's you love their essence, you love their personality, you love who they are on a very genuine level. It's not it's not a surface level thing, right? It's not just because they're pretty. It's because the things that they do, the way they carry themselves makes them a beautiful person. When you really, really look at them, when you stop, when you get out of that haze, that spell they put you under, and you look at them through a, a clear, rational lens, which is tough when you have been trauma bonded to the narcissist, when you're in love with this person, when all of these things that cloud your rational judgment and it's it's easier to see right it's always easier to see from a third person perspective when you look at your friend's relationship and you see how their partner is treating them like crap it's easier to see it because you're not emotionally involved you are looking out for your friend's best interest and you're you're, you're seeing it like a math equation right you're seeing it in this like well, they're doing this, this, and that, and that is not good because it's doing this, this, and that. And your emotions aren't involved, right? But when you're in that relationship, your friend isn't seeing it that same way because when their partner does something terrible to them, like yells at them for no reason, or you know, maybe like cheats on them, and they they backwards they do these like mental gymnastics where well yeah maybe he he did like didn't call me for three days but you know yeah like i'm, I'm so they really want that person so bad that they, that they use their emotions and their feelings about the situation to rationalize what happened it's like no but they, they really really do love me and i want you know it's there's all these things going on inside of us where like with a narcissist they do all these terrible things to us, but because we want that person, because we want to keep having that feeling, because we want to keep being in that relationship with that person, we excuse all the bad things and kind of replace, you know, when they do terrible things to us, we, we kind of brush it aside and we kind of try to replace it with like a, like it's future, it's hope, right? It's like, but I'm going to keep being with them and I'm going to get that little, little, crumbs of joy that I get when they when they're nice to me sometimes when I was dating the narcissist 
at a certain point, you get so caught up in the drama. You get so caught up in... I see as human beings, we are these very goal-oriented creatures. And even when you think it, you're not in that state of mind, you are. Whether it's, what do I want to eat? Who do I want to date? Who do, you know, what, what am I... Even when you're just daydreaming, you're always reaching for something. And with the narcissist, I, I just thought, I, I really want this person. And, you know, for me, for everyone is different. But for me, it's just very pretty girl, at least on the outside. That was one of her only redeeming qualities. But I just really wanted to be with this person. I really wanted to... She's just pretty. I wanted to be with her and nothing was going to stop me from being with this person no matter what. It doesn't matter if she treated me terribly. It doesn't matter if like I was going to end up in financial ruin, which I did. But whatever reason it's causing you to go after this person, it's also you're chasing a feeling. When you want to go eat something, you're chasing a feeling. When you want to get that dream job, you're chasing a feeling. And that's what I noticed about what, you know, do we really love the narcissist still? Do you really love that person? That person that's all like fake, that person whose persona is all made up. It's like, a co like if you notice what the narcissist does, they mirror a lot of your actions and your words. They're, they're studying you. They're not that sweet, nice person that you might think they are in your head or that you're hoping they are in, in your head. They're a very cold, calculated, manipulative person. They are studying how you behave, what you say and do, so they can plan and plot and repeat back to you the perfect thing and you know, the perfect thing to say to to push your buttons. If you like, you know, for me, I've always kind of been like a hopeless romantic and I've wanted to find like true love right whatever oh man whatever that means these days after I'm just you know after dealing with a narcissist and so many failed relationships that's like a tough topic to speak on but the point being that the narcissist saw that in me and they started playing that game they obviously, a narcissist is obviously not looking for true love. They're looking for supply, right? They're looking for what they can get out of you. And she she gave me that. She tried to like project that she was going to be, you know, that we're going to get married, that she was going to be, that she's the perfect partner for me, that she was going to give me every, you know, that fairy tale that I've always wanted. And of course it was all a lie and it ended up, very badly because it's betrayal you betrayed yourself because a lot of people you know a lot a lot of people say they see these warning signs we especially if if you the type of people who get into relationships like and like get stuck in relationships with the narcissist they are very they're very caring people they're very giving people and because they are that type of person, even though sometimes naivety and not and our you know our feelings and emotions and all that clouds our judgment, we're still we're so highly intelligent, um, astute kind of people, and and we know we we know what people's needs are, and that's what gets us. We we try to please a narcissist, but a narcissist has no pleasing. If you recall your experiences with them, you might be able to please them. And sometimes it, it lasts a while, right? Sometimes it only lasts like a few minutes and then they're back at it again because they don't have a sense of self in a sense. They, they are always looking outside of themselves to fulfill their to fulfill their sense of identity they cannot self-regulate they aren't like you and I where when we feel sad we can kind of sit there and be like yeah well that was a bummer and and this is this is 
a, you know, a function, a capacity that's been destroyed by the narcissist, but try to picture back to a point B, uh, before you met them, but you can kind of sit there and be like, ah, well, that was bad. And you kind of play out these scenarios in your head and, and you self-regulate because you know who you are. You, you, you have a solid state of identity on like the narcissist and you know how to cope with the problems of reality. But let's say like, I'm trying to paint you a picture of what goes on in the narcissist. So you can see that this person is, that you don't really love this person. You, you love whatever they kind of reflected back to you. Imagine having to create a false identity because whatever happened to you in your life, whether good or bad, you know, there's so many theories on this, but whatever happened to that narcissist, they don't like what happened. So they created, they create this kind of false identity. So let's say you had to create this false identity. Let's say you had to make up a whole story. I'm a, a secret agent, you know, because because whatever happened, it's it, you're running away from the past. I'm a, I'm a secret agent, and my mission in life is to, I don't know, gather and tell it. You know, it's, it's, it's a crazy scenario, but just keep with me. I, I'm like a secret agent that's trying to uh, take to like gather intelligence for. America and you have to hold on to that identity so tightly because whatever happened in the past this is reminding me if you guys have seen the movie uh the born identity right like where he like they like erase his memory from the past it's like that so like every time someone tells me you're not a secret agent I'm like you shut the hell up I am and like it just it hurts my my sense of reality <laughs> that's that's what a narcissist is they they they're so they're holding on to dear life by a thin thread and that thin thread you know imagine if if you created this false persona and that was your whole identity how fragile your life would be how chaotic it would be right if you went around pretending like you were this you know like that scenario I just told you you wouldn't be able to function in society you wouldn't be able to get a job you're like it'd be like hey go 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 stack those boxes over there you know we we're at work and you're like what i'm a secret agent I, I can't stack up those boxes you you're a crazy person and that's really mean to say because at the end of the day they're still a human being but you don't really love that person you you fell in love with that persona they made up and on top of that, it's a persona that they tailor made when they met you. If you really think about it and you go back, when you first met that narcissist, they looked at you like a piece of meat. They studied you. They s People like that have a very, they have a, like a superpower of perception. They can read your micro expressions on your face. They can read your gait, the way you walk. They, and then from and basically um, and interrogating you and asking you if you, if you remember your first interaction with a narcissist, they were very, it was like a job interview, but especially if they're, they're the smarter, more experienced narcissist, they knew, they know how to, they know how to do it in a way where it doesn't seem like they're trying to like, you know gather intelligence on you and they figured you out at least enough to get you in the situation it's why you're watching a video like this because they they deceived you they manipulated you into a situation where they played on your weaknesses your strengths they played a character for you and the reason you feel like you love them or maybe even you feel like you still love them is because you are attached to that fake persona that they projected onto you.